Hello. Welcome back to Hardcore, and we've made it to episode three. Come on, own up. You thought it'd all be over by now, didn't you? But that's okay, because I actually had pretty low expectations of myself anyway. But so far, we've managed 139 days in Hardcore without dying, which is actually pretty amazing given my past record. And in the last episode, we made this beautiful blacksmith smelting house to cover up an underground iron farm, which has been churning out iron quite rapidly. Sorry, golems. And in the comments in the last video, I asked whether you thought that we should decorate down here or just leave it looking rubbish. And obviously nobody who replied said to leave it rubbish, and the reply said I should decorate it and make it look better. So, we decorated it. And it's not perfect, but it's quite hard to make an iron farm look good when you need to make it no higher than two blocks tall, so they spawn in the death chamber. And we even decorated down here, which kind of makes it look more like a prison with the iron bars. And you might notice it's not decorated in there, there's still all the granite and stone, but to be honest, I can't really face trying to move the beds and the villagers, because we just know they're going to escape. But at least the golems will leave this world in something that looks at least semi-decent. And what about our plans for today? Well for today we have two main plans and they revolve around XP and storage. And on the storage front we are going to make an absolutely huge storage house today. And I mean huge, it's going to put the rest of these builds around here to shame. And that is very much needed because as you can see this is just not working for me, I cannot live like this. But that will come a little bit later because more importantly as you can see we're covered in diamond gear but it's nowhere near shiny enough so we need to get this stuff enchanted. And for that we're going to need some XP so we need to head back down to the mine shaft. Well you might remember that in previous episodes we found not just one but two cave spider spawners. And with those we can make a double cave spider farm and that's going to give us a bunch of XP at this early game stage. And they're pretty simple to make, but the main thing we need to do is find a spot where both of them will be activated at the same time. So if we clear some of these blocks out, we'll be able to see both spawners at the same time. And we can see that when we're smack bang in the middle of the two, they're both activated. So let's make a spider farm, shall we? And the spider farm is all done, and to be honest, that clip made it look a lot easier than it really was. Making a double spider farm can be a bit of a pain with trying to get the water to flow in the right way. But it's all done now, and as you can see from my XP bar, we are racking up the levels quite nicely. And we now have a good few level 30 enchants possible. So let's head off back to our base to the enchanting setup, but taking a quick detour through the strip mine so we can grab some more diamonds to replace these shoddy tools. Oh my life. Well that was the closest we've come to death so far. It just goes to show why some enchanted diamond gear is going to do us very good. And on that very quick little diamond mining sesh we managed to get ourselves 20 diamonds. So I think it's time to make a few more diamond tools. So let's get ourselves a diamond sword, a diamond shovel, a diamond axe to repair this broken one, another diamond pick to replace the broken silk touch one, and another diamond pick that can be our fortune one eventually. And that still leaves us with eight lovely diamonds going spare. And now it's time to use some of these lovely levels and this equally lovely enchanting table and stick some enchantments on this diamond gear. So I'll quickly do that and then I'll show you in a minute what we managed to get. So I got a bit carried away. I started enchanting a few things but I couldn't really stop. So after a few trips back down to the spider farm for more XP, we now have all of these enchantments. Look how shiny we are. So we're now fully shiny on the armor. So we've got protection three, unbreaking three. Some of the bits have got protection four, which is pretty decent. And then on the tools, we've got a new upgraded bow with power four. We've got Sir Stabalot, our trusty sword. And we've got a new axe with efficiency. And then we've got a new fortune and a silky pickaxe with efficiency four and unbreaking. 
It's not the perfect stuff, but maybe we can go proper OP with some villager trades at some point in the future. But that is going to make resource gathering a hell of a lot easier and protect us if we get any more creepers. Well, creeping, I guess. But next up, it's time for a new segment. Snow does something from the comments you can join in too. Yeah. That's legit the best thing I've ever done. Yes, it's the catchily named Snow Does Something from the Comments section. And you'll never guess what we're going to do. Yes, we're going to do something from the comments from the last video. So if you have something that you think I should do in the next episode, drop it in the comments and I might just get to it in the next vid. Unless this section completely bombs and I've made a complete idiot of myself, which is very possible. And for our first ever Snow Does Something from the Comments section, we have this one from Kat, who said, Gosh, that house is absolutely adorable. Oh, I'm blushing, thank you. I think you should build a bigger and pretty wheat field to replace the smaller one. And you know what? That is an absolutely great shout because down here we used to have our manky little wheat field. And then we built the smelting house over the top. But there's a lot of sort of dead space around here at the moment. So I think we should make some nice pretty wheat fields just like Cat requested. So let's do that, shall we? Well, that took longer than I'm happy to admit it did. But it turns out that Cat was right. Adding more wheat fields around here does make it look a bit more filled out and nice. And if you can just creep through the trees, you can see I've taken some of the wheat fields up the side of the little hill next to where the starter base is. And it's wrapped around all the side of the smelting house. And you can see I've taken the path all the way around the side and it does make it look a lot nicer to walk through. It kind of stops up here. I haven't really got to this bit yet, but I thought this would be a nice little area at the top here to have like a farmhouse or a barn or something like that. Maybe something we can get to in future episodes, if we make it that far, of course. But I think it's only right that we make a little note of whose idea it was. Thanks, Kat. You might notice when we come back this way towards the starter house that there's a big open space here, which you might think would be a good place for another wheat field. But actually, that leads us nicely on to the next job for us today to build our big old beastie storage house because as i said earlier this bit of a chest mess that we've got going on over here is really not working for me i like to be a hell of a lot more organized than this and before we can do a build we need some resources so let's go and gather some up shall we which consisted of decimating the wheat field that we literally just spent hours making we then needed a bunch of wood so we chopped down a spruce forest some oak birch jungle as well as a dark oak forest we then proceeded to completely ruin a beautiful lush cave before grabbing some sand the only way we know how, just like episode 1 with some TNT, before finally stripping all the wood. Which leads us to now, and we have this area here, which is in absolutely no fit state for a build, so we need to flatten it out a bit. And now that's done, we've got a beautiful flat space over here behind us, ready to put a build. And we've also got chests full to the brim with resources. I think it's time for us to get cracking on the build. Before I show you the build, this little guy, he's just been hanging around the whole time like a lost little pup. I think he wants to be our friend. We need to tame him, but I have no bones. Let's go find some.
Okay, distraction over, and yes, we are a pincushion with pins in our head. But let's see if we can tame this guy with 15 bones. I hope it's enough. Ah, first one. I actually had two bones in my starter base, so maybe that wasn't required after all. But yes, you are very cute, and you can come and live with us, and you can come on our travels as we go and have a look at the storage house and show everyone who's watching. And if anyone's got any good ideas for a name for this little guy, let me know in the comments. But yes, the thing that I was supposed to be showing you before I got totally distracted, our beautiful storage house is now done. And maybe we can stop living in those pokey little chests in the starter base. And if we follow the path from the rest of the area, we've got two entrances to this house. So we've got a little side building over here with a beautiful little stairway that takes you up to that door. And we've got the main entrance at the front here. And I've actually put the free cam mod onto the world. So if I come out of my face, because this is such a big one, it's easier to show you from this angle. And actually, before I start that, look at this. This area is starting to look so beautiful now. I am so chuffed with how this is coming out. But yes, let's talk over the build. So it's the same sort of color palette, but you can see at the bottom, because this is such a big one, we've taken the stone walls up a bit further on the bottom. We've got this awesome little crane pulley system, which is taking some of the storage that we're putting together from the bottom down here up into the attic space through this big open window on the side. We've got this little balcony section at the front here. I really wanted to add that on this one because eventually, if we get wings, we can just fly straight onto here and go straight through there instead of having to land and use the stairs inside like some kind of minion. And actually, on the other side, we've got another similar sort of window, which is this big open plan one where we can fly straight in and get straight into the chest rooms, which you can just about see poking through there. And if we come out of F4 mode, you're not going to believe this. I've actually done the interior. Would you believe it? So yes, through the front door, I've just tried to put loads of chests in here basically. So in total, I think there's well over 100 chests throughout this building. And I'm thinking that should keep us occupied for quite a while. Oh, dude, you're okay there. So yeah, down here, we've got just a basic little sort of kitcheny area, a brewing stand that we robbed from the village over the road and a load of chests. And do you reckon these are full? Do you reckon we've moved the junk from over in the starter base? No, of course I haven't. I haven't moved anything over yet. That might be an in-between episodes job, I think. And these doors take you through to the little side building, which I'll show you in a minute. And if we come up the little winding staircase, the big storage room at the top, which has got the open window on the side and the little balcony on the other side. And this is actually a perfect time to show you. This is completely unplanned, but look at the view. You've got the sun set in on one side from the little balcony section, which is just beautiful. And on the other side, through the big open window, you've got the moon rising. Anyway, now the moon's risen and all the scary mobs are starting to come out. Maybe I should carry on showing you the room. So yes, similar to downstairs, loads of chests. I've left out the scaffolding. I was using this to put the interior together and I actually thought it looked really cool. It was like a funky little way to show you how to get up to the chests right at the top, even though we can't actually reach them. Now for the side building and the roof space, this is where I need your help. Because you'll see when we climb up here to get to the attic, it's an empty shell at the moment with nothing in it. So I need some ideas of what we could put in this little space. I'm thinking a farm, maybe a sugarcane farm, something like that. But let me know in the comments what you think we should do. And heading back down here, likewise for the little side building. Yeah, there's nothing in here either. Again, it's a complete shell. So we're going to need to fill this space. Again, maybe some farms. Maybe we can move some villagers over here. But let me know what you think we should do with it. <coughs> But because in real life I've been feeling poorly for the last week and I think my voice is going to die on me soon, I think now's the perfect time for us to end the episode. So from me and my good little buddy down here, who needs a name remember by the way, I'll see you on the next one. See ya!